So the test tomorrow has 12 questions. Now, um, the reason why there's only 12 is it's got quite a bit of calculations. You know, some of them will be simple, some will be a little bit more challenging. However, nothing as difficult as number 10 in the homework last night, you won't have numbers that large. You still will have numbers in the hundreds that you're gonna expect to multiply and divide, but nothing in the millions. All right, so 12 questions. One of those 12 questions will be a proof. Um, the proof, you can probably do it in three to four steps. It's not going to be a really difficult proof. Um, if you take more than three or four steps, um, depending on the version you get, that's perfectly fine. But you really shouldn't need more than five steps. So of the 12 questions, there's one other additional question that involves a little bit more work. That'll be worth 10 points. But the other um, 10 questions are going to be 8 points each. So if you're just trying to figure out what your grade's going to be. Um, most of the questions, except for the proof, are calculations. Except for the questions, like you saw in the quiz yesterday, where I ask you to, um, I give you a picture of two triangles and I asked you, are these triangles similar? And then if they were similar, you write a similarity statement. And then also what I'm gonna add to the test question is you must explain. And your explanation is gonna be telling me, did you use angle, angle, side, angle, side, or side, side, side? So for example, if you have a question like this, where you have two triangles, and let's say this is marked with an 80, and this is an 80, let's call this A, B, C, X, Y, Z. And then let's say this one has 10 and a five, and an eight and a four. What you would do is to check to see if these are similar, you could have said that angle B, is congruent to angle Y because they're both 80 degrees. Then you would also show me that AB, so XY over AB, 5 over 10. And then you can show, so that would have been this one with this one. And then check this one with this one. So the smallest numbers together and then the largest. So you would also show that ZY over BC equals four to eight. Both of these simplify one to two. So then you would say, yes, these two are similar. And then the similarity statement that you would write you could write that triangle ABC is similar to triangle XYZ. And then your reason would be side, angle, side. So where it says to explain, that's what you're going to put. So same type of question you saw in the quiz. The only thing I'm adding to the question is the explain part. Because when you took the quiz, we only knew one shortcut. And all of the answers, it was either no or it would have been yes. And the reason would have been angle, angle. Now that we have three options here, that's why I'm adding in the portion that says explain. So calculations, questions like this. Um, calculation questions can also be word problems. However, again, nothing as multi-stepped as the question you had in the 8-4 homework. It would just be a question like that, but a single step. Um, not where you would have to have calculated all these different side lengths, fine perimeter, fine cost, it would have just been one question from that you would have to pull out of the question. Um, so 12 questions, be able to multiply and divide without a calculator. All of the answers are gonna be exact. None of them will be rounded. Now, some of them will be decimals, but it'll be a terminating decimal. Like for example, what I mean by that, let's say after you solved the problem, you ended up getting X equals 37 over five. 
You need to turn this into a mixed number or a decimal. So the way that we would do that, take the numerator, put it in the division box. Five goes into 37 seven times. 35. Now you can either choose to make it a mixed number by taking the remainder, it goes to the rooftop, taking your divisor, it's the denominator, or we could have also made it a decimal by adding a point zero here, goes in here seven times, subtract, bring down, and then it goes in here four times. So the answer is either seven and two fifths or 7.4. These are exact, okay? They terminate, they're not repeating. You don't have to round anything. This is how the answers will be. You can have decimals that are exact. So you can have decimal answers. Yes? Correct. So I would accept the answer to a question like this either way. Okay, but don't round anything. If you round and you don't give me the exact answer, I'm going to take off more points than I did on the quiz. Because by now, everyone should know how to multiply and divide. Pretty good there? All right. So that's pretty much it. Now, I also posted an extra review. It's on your to-do list. It does not need to be turned in. So if you read the instructions in the assignment in capital letters, it says, do not submit to Canvas. Questions 1 through 10 on that extra review would be an excellent way to prepare for the test. So if you're looking for additional practice problems, that review is now posted. Again, remember, you can always use your resources on your Big Ideas website. You could always go back and do problems that I did not assign for homework by using your e-textbook. Um, so you have all of these resources that you can do if you're looking for extra practice. Um, again, always review your warm-ups, your notes, and your homework looking for extra practice. And the quiz that I gave you back yesterday, you can use that to review as well. So that's your overview for tomorrow's quiz. It is on paper, it is not on canvas, so bring a pencil and an eraser. Most of my pencils um, the erasers have been used up, so they're just, they're, you can still write with them, but they don't erase. So bring a pencil with an eraser, um, no calculator. You're going to get 45 minutes for the test. So come in tomorrow. Um, you guys actually have it first period. So, um, you know, at least we don't have to rush. We'll watch announcements and then we'll start the test. None of the questions are multiple choice. They're all free response. Okay, so you, they're all fill in answers. No multiple choice questions. Okay, so last night you had to complete this review and you had to turn it into Canvas. Again, it was in a completion grade, not an accuracy grade. So as long as you showed work and showed me your proportions, you will get full credit. If you only wrote down answers with no work to back it up, your grade will suffer. So just always remember, you must show work. Now, are there any um, questions on this that anyone wants to see explained? Okay, so here it says two similar triangles have a pair of corresponding side lengths of 12 meters and eight meters. And then it gave me the larger triangle's perimeter, which is 48, and the area of it as 180. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the corresponding side lengths, put them together in a fraction. Remember, the corresponding side length is also the same as the scale factor. And I can reduce this. I can divide them both by four, and this becomes two thirds. Now, we didn't know if it went from small to big or big to small. Um, technically, your scale factor, depending on the order that they pictured them, could have also been three to two. But again, it's not asking for a scale factor. All I need to do is take that side length, corresponding sides, put it in a ratio and reduce it. Now, that ratio will be the same that we're gonna use for perimeter. And then it's also gonna be 
take that same corresponding ratio, but for area, we have to square it. Now, what we would do is when we go to set up our proportion, you see how the 12, this is obviously coming from the larger, this is a larger number, and this is a smaller number. So when I go to set up my proportion, the perimeter they gave me was from the larger triangle. So I'm gonna put it in the denominator next to the three. And then now I can cross multiply and get three X. And then two times 48 is 96. Divide by three. 96 divided by three gives me 32. So the perimeter of the smaller triangle is gonna be 32 meters. Now for area, we need to take this side length ratio and we need to square it. So then it'll become four over nine. And then I'm gonna use the 180. That was again, the larger triangle. So I put it in the denominator and now I can cross multiply here. So when I cross multiply, I'm gonna get nine X and then 180 times four, 720. And now I have to divide 720 by nine. Goes in here eight times and then it goes in zero. So the area is gonna be 80 meters squared. Remember to square that corresponding side length ratio for area. Perimeter uses it as is. Pretty good there. For number five here, you have to show that these two triangles are similar, and if they are similar, you're gonna write a similarity statement. You're gonna get a question like this on the test tomorrow. The only thing else is you're gonna have to explain and your explanation is gonna be the shortcut you use. So what I could do here is show that angle Q is congruent to angle T because they're both 35. And then I also have a pair of vertical angles here. Because I can show that I have two pairs of congruent angles, I can say, yes, these are similar. The reason why I can say that is by using the angle-angle similarity theorem because I found two congruent angle pairs and now my similarity statement, I can start out by saying um, QRS is similar. And again, I got a match. So Q had the 35. So I need to match it with the T, which has 35. And then my second um, angle that I put in here was R. I'm going to match it with U because R and U didn't have any markings. And then finally S. And this would have been using angle, angle. So for number nine, it says to either use SSS or SAS to show that these two triangles are similar. Now, if I'm doing SSS side, 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 I would have to show all corresponding sides are proportional. If I do side angle side, I have to show one angle that's congruent, the included angle, and then the two proportional sides that form that included angle. Does that make sense? All right, so what I'm gonna do is pull these apart to make it a little bit easier. So I can refer to the little purple one and then the larger blue one. So the larger blue one is STQ. Now, in order to find the length of SQ here, I have to add seven and 14 and I get 21. And then for ST, it just had a 15. And then for TQ here, I have to add 4.5 and 9 and get 13.5. And I've got the little one. It's got a 14, a 10, and a 9. So now what I need to do here is if I'm going to do 
side, 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 I would show that all three sides are um, proportional. And again, I don't have a similarity statement, so I'm gonna go by the size of the numbers. So for example, the smallest number in the blue one with the smallest one in the purple. So I can match nine and 13.5. Again, I'm gonna move the decimal point. So if I move it once here, I gotta move it once here. So now it becomes 90 over 13.5. And then I can divide this by, and actually no, it doesn't become 13.5, it becomes 135. because I moved the decimal point. I'm gonna divide them both by, let's see. Let me try to divide them both by 15. Um, 90 divided by 15, it's gonna give me six. And then 135 divided by 15 gives me nine. I can actually go one more time. Actually, I could have done 45, um, but I'm gonna divide these now both by three and I get two to three. So that's the first proportional. So again, I'm matching TQ and the UQ. That was the first side that I matched. Now let's go back and grab the middle number, 10, and put it with 15. So this is gonna be RU with TS. So 10 over 15 simplifies two to three. And then now I can get the biggest one, which is gonna be the RQ with SQ. 14 to 21, two to three. So because all three sides are proportional, they all simplify to the same ratio, you can say, yes, these are similar by side, side, side. This would be your explanation, writing the statement of proportionality. However, if you didn't wanna use side, 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 we could also do side, angle, side. We would have to say that angle Q is congruent to angle Q and that would be reflexive. And then we would also show these two ratios, the TQ. So we would have also said UQ over TQ, and then also the, 20, the one with the 21 and the 14 is proportional to the RQ and the SQ. So this would have been your explanation for side angle side. Either one works on this one. It's not always the case. Number six. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom on in here to number 15. So for number 15, you can set up your proportion in a variety of ways. They wanted us to find AB. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a variable to AB. I'm gonna say AB is gonna be X. Now, the way that it was presented in the notes, they told you to take the side here that was broken into the segments and put these two broken segments into the same fraction. So we could do four over 10, and then I can also do its corresponding side. So the four, the side of the triangle it's next to is X. So I'll put X across from it. And then over here, the 10, it's next to the 18. Now, again, I highly recommend that if there is a fraction in your proportion that can be reduced, reduce it first. It'll make your um, calculations a little bit easier. You don't have to, that's totally up to you. I'm gonna reduce the 4 tenths to 2 fifths, and I get x over 18, and now I can cross multiply. Five times x, two times 18 is 36. I'm gonna divide both sides by five. So here's again where we're gonna end up with either a decimal or a mixed number. So X is 36 over five. I want you to simplify this 
to a mixed number or a decimal because it's a side of a triangle. So 36 divided by 5. 5 will go into 36 seven times. Multiply, subtract. If you want to make it a mixed number, it's 7 and 1 fifth. If you choose to make it a decimal, we'll go ahead and add a decimal point here. Bring it straight up. Subtract, bring down. 5 goes into 10 twice. So the decimal for 1 fifth is 2 tenths. So 7.2 would be the length of AB. Now, you could have also set up your proportion um, if you wanted to do top to bottom. So I could also have done 10 over 18, and then four over, and it's sort of like here, four over X. Um, again, whatever you're more comfortable doing, find your technique and stay consistent. If I reduce 10 18 I can make it 5 over 9, 4 over x. I still get the same thing that I needed to solve. And again, make it a decimal or a mixed number. Any other ones from the review? Number 12. So let me see what they told us. They told us here that AB is parallel to CD. So for here, what I can do is realize that I can use my triangle proportionality theorem. And I know when I have a side of the triangle that's parallel to another side, I know it's going to split the other two sides of the triangle proportionally. And again, you can either do top to bottom or side to side. So if I just do the top part here, 13.5, put it, the 13.5 and the 12 in the tops. And then I would put the bottom, the 22.5 underneath here, because that's what it's underneath. And then the 20 under the 12. Now, you could have also set it up side to side. So you could have also done 13.5 over 12. And then 22.5 over 20 here. Um, what did it ask me to find? Um, determine whether they're parallel. Okay, so what we're using here is the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem. So what I'm trying to confirm is that these two ratios are equivalent, that they simplify to the same thing. So what I can do here is instead, let me put it, um, I'll just leave it there. So I'm trying to check this or check this. It doesn't matter. So let me go ahead and do the one that I wrote down originally, the top over bottom. So I'm going to take the 13.5 over the 22.5, and I'm going to get rid of the decimal point. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 10, which moves the decimal point. So now I'm just simplifying the fraction 135 over 225. And let's see. I can try to divide them both by 45, I think. If I divide this one by 45 and this one by 45. Now, if you didn't catch that, you could first try to divide by 5, then divide by 9, and let's see what we get. So 135 divided by 45 is 3. And then 225 divided by 45 is 5. Now I need to simplify 12 over 20. If it reduces to 3 to 5, then I can say that those lines are parallel. So I'm going to divide this one by 4 and this one by 4. And it does simplify 3 to 5. So because my sides are proportional, I can say yes that this side here, CD, is parallel to AB. This was the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem. So if the sides are proportional, then the sides are parallel. All right, so for number 14, it says find the length of AB. Now, what I can tell here is because I have corresponding angles here, 
that tells me that these three lines are parallel. So this is my three parallel lines theorem. So because they're parallel, it's going to split my sides of that, those transversals proportionally. And again, I can do top to bottom or left to right. So what they want me to find here is the length of AB. So this little piece right here. I'm gonna again set my proportion up top to bottom. Now, you can do X over seven and then six over four. However, if you wanna go left to right, then it would be X over six and then seven over four. Either way is gonna work here. So when I cross multiply, I get four X equals 42. And now I have to divide 42 by four. Four goes into four once, bring down the two. Four will not go into two, so zero times. And if you write this as a mixed number, it's 10 and 2 fourths, which simplifies to 10 and a half. Or if when you did the division, you added a decimal point, one, zero, four, and then bring down, then it goes in here five times. So either method, your answer here is either 10 and a half or 10.5. Don't leave it as 42 over four. So if you want to simplify six over four first, that's an excellent idea. Make it three over two, and then you get two X equals 21. And then we would divide 21 by two, and we still get 10 and a half. So definitely, since we're not using calculators, definitely simplify. Okay, you don't have to but it just makes it a little bit easier. Now, back to this question. When we were trying to simplify the 135 over 225, if you didn't realize that you could have divided it by 45, but you saw that they both ended in a five, you could first divide it by five, get 27, and then 225 divided by five is 45, but then you would have had to divide this again and I would have divided it by nine, and then it would have gone to the three to five. So, you know, I granted 45 was a big uh, GCF to divide by, so you could still break it down step by step if that was easier for you. Four, number 11. So again, to determine if they're parallel, I need to check to see if the sides are proportional. So, I can either do top to bottom or side to side. So if I do top to bottom, I can do 10 over 20 and then 16 over 28. 10 over 20 simplifies to one half. 16 over 28, I can divide these both by four and get four, four to seven because one half is not equal to four to seven this one, I would say that the lines are not parallel. Mm -hmm. okay, so again, you had the answers. I will have office hours in the morning if you end up doing more practice problems and you still have questions, go back. This is the other review that I posted. I highly recommend that you at least focus on one through six to practice. Um, however, one through 10 would be good. Um, you know, if you want to attempt the word problems, I'm not going to give you something as intense as these word problems, but they're always a good thing to practice and develop your skills for solving these word problems because there's a lot of word problems on the SAT. So that is posted there. Again, remember, don't always focus just on the reviews I give you. Use your warm-ups, use your notes, use your homeworks, use any of the resources from your textbook as well. Oh, the one, okay, so number five. Okay, so for number six, they want me to find the value of the variable. So they're asking me to find P. Now, when we did this, the theorem told us to take 
um, either top to bottom or the segments of that side and put it in a ratio. So what I'm gonna do to solve this is I'm gonna say that this little segment right here is gonna be 21 minus P. And then this piece right here is the P. So I'm gonna go ahead and do top to bottom. I'm gonna do 12 over 24 is equal to 21 minus P over P. I'm gonna simplify the 12 over 24 before I start this, because I really don't wanna have to multiply 21 and 24. So I'm gonna simplify 12 over 24 to 1 half, and now I can do the cross products. So I can multiply this times this, this times this. So I would get for the blue, one times P. For the red, I have to distribute the two to both the 21 and the P. This will become P equals 42 minus 2P. I need to group my P's together. So I'm gonna add 2P to the other side. 3P equals 42, divide by three. 42 divided by three, goes in here once, subtract, and P equals 14. And if you, you know, wanted to test it out, this would be 14, and then 21 minus 14 is seven. Again, that was from the additional review that I just posted today.